But a tool response group can expect to be at the absolute forefront of any UK intervention. All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so today we are checking out a video from the Royal Marines Commando YouTube channel. Now, you guys have been recommending me this one. I know I'm a little bit late in the game. I think this came out maybe about three weeks ago, but I definitely want to check it out. So this one is titled The Littoral and the Commandos, which is like pretty vague, but coming from a Marine Corps perspective, as far as like having that amphibious mindset, the littorals, if you guys don't know what that means, it's basically like the coast of a country. So yeah, it's pretty important. I know it's pretty important in Marine Corps doctrine. So I can imagine it's pretty similar with the Royal Marine Commandos, considering, you know, they're actually going back to their commando roots and they're sort of taking that amphibious mindset with them. So check it out. And again, I'm expecting the quality to be top notch because these videos are usually pretty solid if you guys haven't seen them. So let's do it. The aircraft is tracking towards the fort. The successful time on clock two minutes. Pretty solid so far. Dang, and they got the helicopter going past the moon and stuff. My gosh, the quality is so good. All right. Pretty spooky, I like it. There we go. Getting to work under the cover of night. Amphibious warfare, the tall strike, is a very complicated form of warfare. Not only do we operate in the most complex water space, so where the, where the sea meets the land, but you have the complexities of navigation and the, the challenges of the environment. Hmm. But there's an additional complexity because of that changing nature between the sea and the land. Oh, okay, yeah. Ah, okay. So I've not really thought about it from the command mindset and also like the navigation mindset. Now, generally speaking with the Marine Corps, when they're doing an amphibious assault, you'll have the amphibious assault vehicles, which I'll sort of put up a picture so you guys can sort of see what that looks like. But that's generally what the Marine Corps utilizes. So it's a little bit more straightforward, I think, just because again, you can sort of steer, it's a little bit easier. And at that point, you're not really trying to be that stealthy because again, the Marine Corps isn't really about that stealth or that commando mindset. So I imagine for these guys, it's going to be a little bit more difficult considering they're trying to be stealthy. The closer, the closer they actually get to the shore, they need to be more and more quiet. And that makes a little bit harder to get that last minute control in so i can imagine that is sort of an issue so having i guess they're saying two commanders would probably alleviate some of that stress yeah there you go they got the formation going in perhaps the enemy are expecting us perhaps they're not the irrespective small night undetected commando teams will provide our commanders with options. Mm. By the time we're ashore, it's already too late for the adversary. Nice. Operating a reach means operating over the horizon. It means that UK assets are protected from enemy security systems, whether that's radar or whether that's missile mm. systems. And it means that commando soldiers can infiltrate securely, but the key is covertly. Yep. So routine operations. Their new kit definitely allows them to do that a little bit better. I can see it's definitely more streamlined, probably a lot more lightweight, but I wonder how their kit is as far as like being a little bit like waterproof. I'm not sure if they care so much about that, but I can imagine if you're assaulting from the water and you don't have anything that's really that waterproof, it's gonna be sort of an issue when you're trying to do longer movements after that. So let me know how y'all deal with that. Do y'all just kind of soak it up or do you have something that's a little bit, you know, waterproof? Cause that'd be kind of funny to hear about. For a tour response group, could be anything from normal oh. capacity building. Okay. Ah, it's a James Bond villain again. I don't know if you guys saw that on Twitter, but he kind of like called me out cause I kind of called him out for being like so spooky. <laughs> and again, he kind of just, maybe it's the accent. Again, if you have an English accent, you automatically seem like you're part of this James Bond movie, whatever role it is. He just happens to be the perfect James Bond villain role. At least that's what I picture when I think of James Bond villains. <laughs> with our allies through to conducting special operations on behalf of UK Special Forces. And of course, moving into crisis response. Oh, yeah. Anything from humanitarian aid, disaster relief, through to a limited intervention. Good stuff. And of course, ultimately, to full war fighting against the peer adversary. 
There we go. Nice, some sabotage stuff or something. Huh. So it looks like the camera's night vision, but I'm not seeing a lot of like, the LRG North actually has I'm not seeing like a lot of lasers or anything getting actuated. So I'm not sure if they're actually, it kind of looks like their night vision was flipped up. So maybe they weren't actually using it. So, so that's a question for my raw Marine commandos. Do y'all have night vision capable optics? And if not, do you have like IR lasers or at least IR flashlights to sort of supplement that? Because I've not really seen that as far as, you know, the, the actual kit that y'all get as part of your weapon systems and whatnot. So if you guys don't have that, let me know. Because, of course, if you have a night vision capable optic that you can actually look, you know, you can look through your optic and actually see it without it, you know, giving away your signature too much or, you know, being a giant blur while you're looking through your night vision. It allows you to keep that stealth for a longer period of time because you're not having to cast a flashlight or cast all these IR lasers or IR flashlights. So it makes it a little bit more, it makes it a little bit easier to make it a little bit more low key. Responsibility that, that spans the whole of, whole of Europe. That is in contrast to uh, LRG South, uh, which will deploy over the next couple of years, which has a focus, I would say, on the other side of the, the Suez Canal, okay. uh, all the way out into the Indo-Pacific region. It's all part hmm. of the Royal Navy's forward presence, which sees units more permanently based forward uh, around the world. Yeah, I've been seeing that. Yeah, the Royal Marine no Commandos going with them too. About who has the most firepower? with nations investing heavily in more high-end technology. Hey, Ospreys. Commandos can infiltrate and identify those key C2 nodes, mm. where those communication systems are, what communication systems enemies are using. This means commandos can essentially cripple enemy <laughs> forces quietly yep. by taking out some of the key infrastructure and less more about large-scale space. Yeah, going back to those commando routes for sure. So We've been seeing that more and more. And it's very hybrid in its forces. A total response group can expect to be at the absolute forefront of any UK intervention. Mm. So what the little response group is like able to do is more uh, regularly engage in a region. And for us, uh, little response group North this year has seen a lot of um, close cooperation in the Baltic region. Um, hey, nice. Should we wish to increase not the CS53, the but the group, cooperation? The next level up is a little strike group. Um, augmenting additional units that provide additional layers of force protection to that group and a huh. more significant uh, headquarters element. And then at the top level... So I know in the Marine Corps, we have something called an ARG, which is the Amphibious Ready Group. And that's generally what you'll see. So with like a MU, a Marine Expeditionary Unit, you might be rolling, or you're probably gonna be rolling with the amphibious ready group. I think that's more of like the Navy side as far as what they call it. So when that Marine Corps element is forward deployed on a ship, they'll have, you know, this this group sort of focused around it. And I think like the main ship will usually be like a, a helicopter dock or something. And they'll have like some other things like LPD ships and other ships like that to sort of support it. I could be wrong. I'm not sure what the doctrine is now, but that's sort of how it was when I was in the Marine Corps. So you kind of have like this support system built up and also allows a little bit more command and control and sort of allows a little more safety as well. Uh, the uh, maritime task group headed by a, an aircraft carrier okay. provides for a full warfighting capability hmm. that can integrate into uh, NATO and our allied partners. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, with the aircraft carrier. Albion is primarily an amphibious unit, so we have our embarked Royal Marines, and our main objective is to assist in getting them ashore safely so that they can. Uh, he's having fun. <laughs> we will nice. always deploy with Task Group escorts, mm -hmm. uh, so we will use them to defend us against any air and surface threats. However, we are capable of defending ourselves as required. So we've got our phalanx close in weapon nice. system. Nice. Uh, and 20 Hell yeah. millimeter guns that can um, defend ourselves from air and surface threats. And we also have a defensive subsurface capability. Nice, good stuff. So while we're inspired by our commando routes, and we firmly see the tall strikers reclaiming our commando space, hmm. it's reclaiming it for the 21st century. Commando forces will be more lethal more sophisticated, more persistently forward deployed, and capable of special operations yeah, yeah. in a way that eclipses anything that was achieved by our previous forebears. Yeah, and again, the new kit sort of helps with that as well. All 
right. Yeah, again, these guys are looking more and more like special operations, not just in their equipment, but also in their capability. So it's really, really good to see. Again, at least moving out of the global war on terror, you're, it's probably going to be a lot easier for them to focus on that commando mindset and just dialing in, dialing in those commando routes. And again, we've been seeing it more and more. And again, I think sort of having that new equipment kind of helps with the, the re-imaging in a way, because again, you can sort of get in the mindset. It feels like you're going through a shift, not just in the tactics, but also having the new equipment. It really feels like there's some change happening. So maybe that sort of helps with the mindset. But again, yeah, littoral combat is absolutely a beast. It's, it's very different from a lot of other things. Like you have subterranean combat, that is a completely different beast. You have mountain warfare, completely different beast. So you have all these different things and you need to have experts that specialize in it. Now the Royal Marine Commandos specialize in a lot of different things. We've sort of seen it with their, their SRS, we've seen it with their, their mountain leaders and whatnot. And of course, the Royal Marine, Marine Commandos in general are going to be those experts at the amphibious warfare. So yeah, tackling the Latoros is probably like the easiest thing for them. But again, now that they're going to their commander routes, they can sort of focus on the fundamentals, the fundamentals like that. So yeah, pretty cool video. Again, the quality was solid. It was good to see our old James Bond villain again. <laughs> again, hopefully he doesn't call me out because he's a pretty scary dude, but a very cool video. Thank you guys for recommending it. Again, it's always cool to check out the high quality stuff and it's always cool to check out the new Royal Marine Commandos kit. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you can hit that thumbs up, comment, let me know what you guys think about it. And again, let me know what you guys know from the Royal Marines as far as what sort of kit they're sort of getting or what sort of kit they have now to sort of allow them to sort of get into that commando mindset a little bit better. But thank you guys for watching. That is it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.